Scientists are familiar with some variations in the light emissions of stars, but these are usually periodic and explainable in the context of longer observations. But during the last decade, researchers have found two stars where a peculiar anomaly occurs. The latest discovery is the star HD 139139, whose intermittent dimming is a mystery to scientists. At the moment, there can only be two explanations for this phenomenon, and one of them would mean that we are not alone in space. In this video, we take a look at how researchers came up with this connection and what this discovery means for life on Earth. But before we get started, we'd like to ask you to make a small contribution to our work. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, you can easily support us by subscribing to the channel now, activating the notification bell, and giving us a like at the end of the video if you enjoyed it. And right now, we're going to the star HD 139 139 to show you what scientists have discovered there. What's strange about HD 139139? HD 139139 is located about 350 light years from Earth in the constellation Libra. The star, which is slightly larger and brighter than our Sun, is a Type G main sequence star and is also listed in some star registers under the name Epic 2497066694. Shortly after its discovery, seemingly random dimmings in HD 139139's luminosity were noticed. This was observed by the Kepler Space Telescope, which measured light emissions from stars to detect passing exoplanets in obscurations. The telescope observed a full 28 dips in brightness over an 87-day period in 2017. Such eclipses of stars have betrayed thousands of exoplanets, but the eclipses are always periodic if they are the result of passing planets. In the case of HD 139-139, however, this periodic repetition of eclipses could not be observed. The astronomers were at first completely puzzled about what cosmic event could be responsible for the fluctuations. For months, the scientists continued to observe the strange star. However, not even one remotely plausible explanation for the phenomenon could ever be found. No mathematical algorithm and no other known dimming rhythm match the patterns HD 139139 produced. The researchers announced that the unexplained light dips would appear as if generated at random. The star was then caught in the crossfire of international teams of researchers. It turned out that HD 139139 is most likely part of a bound binary star system. The luminosity of the larger HD 139139 seems to outshine the light of the smaller star. It's probable that the second star is a red dwarf of class 5 to 7. But this assumption is not absolute so far. The presence of a twin star could also not explain the luminosity changes of HD 139139. In the next step, the researchers try to determine whether the star is orbited by exoplanets. According to calculations, the star system could have 14 or possibly as many as 28 exoplanets. Of course, the researchers rechecked whether these planets could be responsible for the mysterious obscurations. But the results that came out of these model calculations showed a very unlikely picture. If the exoplanets were the reason for the dimming, they would all have to be about the same size and orbiting their star in very tight orbits at virtually the same time. This would be like 14 Earths in a row, all orbiting the Sun in similar orbits. This is highly unlikely from gravitational forces alone. Astronomers know that planets, in almost all systems, are very far apart. Otherwise, they would influence each other too much, push them out of their orbits, or even collide. This explanation attempt soon had to be given up, therefore. But what is it then that obscures the star HD 139139 in this mysterious way? Researchers tried another explanation. A model calculation had shown that theoretically, a planet shortly before its dissolution could exhibit this type of darkening. However, this explanation did not prevail, since plausible explanations for the reasons of the dissolution of the planet weren't forthcoming. Finally, the researchers turned to a theory that traditional science still struggles with at present. There was already once a quite similar case. Tabby star, or KIC 
2852. Two years before HD 139139, about 1,470 light years from Earth, a star showed even more extreme dimming. The star between the constellations Cygnus and Lyra got the official designation KIC 846 -2852. In expert circles, the oddball is also called Tabby Star. It was discovered by an astronomer named Tabitha Boyajin. KIC 846-2852's dimming was so strong that no object passing in front of it could be responsible for it. Researchers had been desperately searching for explanations in 2015 as well. Eventually, experts agreed on two variants. One natural explanation could be large amounts of extremely fine dust. Another group of researchers proposed a much more exciting explanation, namely, the darkenings could come from the megastructure of an extraterrestrial civilization. In the 1960s, a Russian astronomer named Nikolai Kardashev created a scale according to which the progress of extraterrestrial civilizations was always tied to their energy consumption. Kardashev's Type II civilizations are characterized, among other things, by the fact that they have managed to cover their immense energy consumption by tapping directly into their star through megastructures. Kardashev did not specify exactly what such structures might look like. However, the scale was later taken up by many other cosmologists, discussed, and translated in possible models. One man was very good at envisioning what megastructures for energy production might look like immediately on or around a star. Freeman John Dyson created several proposals that have become known as Dyson Spheres. Power plants like these would truly be an explanation for the dimming of Tabby Star, or KIC 846-2852, and possibly for the light fluctuations off HD 139-139. The fact that this phenomenon has been observed only twice also fits into the picture. On the one hand, we have not been technically able to observe light fluctuations of distant stars for so long. The Kepler telescope was constructed specifically for this purpose. The telescope's sole purpose was to detect exoplanets. These provide obscurations as they pass in front of their stars. The second logical explanation for the fact that there are only two stars with signs of a Dyson sphere is assumed abundance of Type II civilizations that would be capable of creating a Dyson Sphere. As it stands now, our space is not very densely populated. Far advanced civilizations would occur at most once every hundred or thousand light years. Although this sounds very exciting, and it might somehow also be desirable to find intelligent living beings out there, the scientists have agreed for the time being on the less spectacular explanation in the case of KIC 846-2852. At the moment, experts favor the already mentioned theory of fine dust obscuring Tabby Star. In the case of HD 139-139, this explanation would also fit. Nevertheless, we now take a closer look at the Kardashev scale and clarify what it would mean for us if HD 139-139 and KIC 846-2852 are actually inhabited star systems. The Kardashev Scale and Extraterrestrial Life Forms The Kardashev Scale classifies the evolutionary stage of extraterrestrial civilizations according to their energy use. But the scale, and especially its successor models, go further. Originally, the three levels said that a Type I civilization uses the resources of its own planet without destroying it. A Type II civilization controls and uses the energy of its star and has access to the energy of stars from uninhabited neighboring systems. Type III civilizations would be advanced enough to use other energy sources in the universe. We might think, for example, of dark matter, the mysteries of which we on Earth do not yet even begin to understand. According to the Kardashev scale, we humans do not come off quite so well at the moment. We are somewhere around 0.6. We do use the energy of our planet, but we have caused great destruction and environmental problems in the process. We are just beginning to use solar energy, so to speak. Type 1 civilizations have achieved far more than just a healthy energy balance. Kardashev and many of his colleagues assume that such a culture must also have developed very far in human and social terms. Besides equality, a high social standard as well as global peace and a unified organization of the population would be typical of Type 1. Now, you can already imagine that a civilization of the Type 2 
would be technically, as well as humanly and socially, still further advanced. We would certainly not have to be afraid of such living beings. For the scientists who dealt with these values, it was certain that high technical progress and the optimal use of energy reserves must almost inevitably go along with a high intelligence as well as peacefulness. Harmful cultures could hardly evolve out of their own star system. These theses are partly shared by evolutionary biologists. But how probable is it that HD 139-139 and KIC 846-2852 are inhabited by Type II civilizations? And could these contact us? In 2020, scientists set out to find out how many intelligent civilizations there are in our galaxy using statistical data and probability calculations. The result was 36. If we consider that there are 100 to 200 billion stars in our galaxy, 36 is relatively few. If HD 139-139 and Tabby Star really provide evidence for Type II civilizations, we would either be very lucky to find two of probably only a handful of other life forms and civilizations. At the same time, this finding could also mean that the statisticians and probability calculators were wrong and that the Milky Way is much more densely populated than assumed. Only civilizations of Type III would be able to journey through the universe. According to the Kardashev scale, these would have already harnessed the entire universe, which means that they have access to unlimited energy and possess technologies with which they can travel faster than light or overcome space-time. For all science fiction fans, this variant would of course be much more exciting and desirable than just boring dust darkening the stars HG 139-139 and Tabby Star. It remains to be seen what new insights the James Webb Space Telescope will provide about these two curious stars. So we can already look forward to seeing what new findings NASA will release. Tell us now what you thought about the discovery of HD 139-139 and KIC 846-2852. Do you think the obscurations could really come from a Dyson sphere? Or are you also one of those people who prefer explanations like dust? We appreciate your input in the comments. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Simply Space.